Hello everyone, welcome to this video. I thought I was going to be better at that intro, but I was not. Um, yeah, I, before I get into this, I want to thank everyone who watched the last video. It has already been the fastest growing um, YouTube video on um, my, entire, my entire page. Um, it is the fastest growing by far. It had nine views I think which is which is great for me like if you were to go and look back at um, my previous my previous um, videos it's not quite that great um, but yeah it is the best out of the last 10 view 10 videos that I've made in terms of fastest growing it already has nine views um, which Frank's at fifth all time. I did the I did the counting earlier. It is fifth out of my uh, twenty six videos. Um, only behind my fantasy league uh, fantasy um, football league losers, which I I should probably look back at that and see how many I got right. I should do that, but um, I, I'll do that at the end of the year. And then um, that is my most watched video. My second most watched video is building a team around Jason Tatum. That was when I made 2K videos. And then same with the Warriors Elimination Rebuild, a 1 out of 30. That was, I should probably rename that to 1 out of 1. <laughs> um, but those were made back in August with the 14 and 12 views. And then League Winners at Every league winners at every Position, that had 10 views. Um, but those were all made in August. It has been a long time since August. And I, since then, my highest viewed video has been uh, eight. I think, yeah, I have yet to reach double digit views. I'm hoping that um this video is the one that does that. But um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get right into this. If you did see the um, last video, I named it "Who Will Be Better," where I looked at. Uh, the top eight quarterback prospects from this 2020 draft class. And now I'm going to do that with running backs. Um, I think just a quick quick summary of them. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go ahead and name them. I think us. So in this top tier of players, we have Clyde edwards Hilaire, DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor, Cam Akers, and J.K. Dobbins. They are all in this top tier. In the second tier, we have Antonio Gibson, and James Robinson, followed by A.J. Dillon, uh, Joshua Kelly, and Zach Moss. That's the typical um, tier rankings you'll see throughout. But um, let's go ahead and get right into this. Um, who do I think is the best running back right now? Um, I honestly think James Robinson is the worst of these running backs, of these 10 running backs. James Robinson from the Jacksonville Jaguars is the worst running back. He's put up much better numbers than A.J. Dillon, Zach Moss, Cam Akers, Joshua Kelly, Jake, and J.K. Thomas, DeAndre Swift, Antonio Gibson, and Jonathan Taylor. But if Jacksonville had any of these other running backs, they would be even better. Um, in ninth place, I have A.J. Dillon. I think right now A.J. Dillon just ha hasn't shown me enough quite yet um, as compared to these other running backs who are getting touches with their teams. A.J. Dillon isn't really getting the touches I would like to see I get. He has the best starting running back ahead of, running back ahead of him. But still I want a bit I want to see a bit more from AJ Dillon. That's why he ranks ninth. Eighth, I have Zach Moss. Uh, he's getting a lot of touches in the uh, red zone. I think he has quite a bit of touchdowns. Let me let me check for sure. But I from what I can tell he's getting excuse me more um, more um, red zone touches then, um, shoot, I just blanked on his name. Then, um, Devin Singletary is. Let me see if I can, um, pull up the exact stat. But I think Zach Moss can make a career out of just end zone rushing. As he, he does have two touchdowns, which isn't bad. Um, he only has, he has 43 attempts for 186 yards and two touchdowns. Which means every 90, 93 yards he's scoring a touchdown, which is pretty good. It's not bad numbers. Then if we compare that to um, 
Devin Singletary, Devin Singletary stats. Um, he averages only 48, one, 48 yards per game, has 385 total yards, and has only one touchdown. So I, I was right in saying that um, Zach Moss is getting these uh, touchdown runs, and that's why he is at 8. 7th, Cam Akers. Um, I think the surprise pick for me, um, outside of... I'll get to him later. Uh, Cam, Aker, Cam Akers was picked ahead of J.K. Dobbins. This is where I was hoping Jonathan Taylor would fall because they had a clear need for running back. And Jonathan Taylor would fit right in. I'm a Wisconsin fan. And I wanted to see Jonathan Taylor do well. That's the other my deal spot for him. But Cam Akers got it. And he's played very well. He's suffered through some injuries. And Darrell Henderson is much better. I thought I knew he was good. But he's been much better than I have anticipated in Los Angeles. Next, sticking in L.A., Joshua Kelly has looked very good. Um, he's splitting touches with Justin Jackson, and especially ever since Austin Eckler went out. Um, once Austin Eckler does come back, Joshua, Kel Joshua Kelly's role will greatly diminish. But as of right now, he's playing fairly decent. I'd say a similar level to Cam Akers, but he's been able to stay on the field. And that's what bumps him up into that sixth spot. At fifth, J.K. Dobbins. Um, he is not benefiting from being in this um vault in this team for this team in baltimore um he has to split carries with mark ingram lamar jackson um robert griffin the third and trace mcsorley every once in a while devin duvernay even gets some touches marquise brown he has to split carries with all those and it's not benefiting well for him once mark ingram retires and he's the lead back and only has to share with lamar jackson and uh, trace mcsorley as RG3 will probably be retired by that point and gone, um, he will explode. He will have amazing year after an amazing year and prove to be one of the best running backs in this draft. At number four, DeAndre Swift. A very similar scenario to J.K. Dobbins, a very talented running back. But he's sharing the backfield with... Um, oh, why am I just blanking on their names? Um... He has Adrian Peterson up there for sure, but I'm trying to, th I'm trying to think of um, of their shoot, shoot, shoot. Who is it? Carry on Johnson. That's who it is. That's who I was trying to think of. Um, yeah, he has to split carries with Adrian Peterson and Carry on Johnson. He has taken the lead back role, but once he cements himself as the absolute number one, it stops splitting carries. He will absolutely dominate year in and year out. At number three, I have Antonio Gibson, who has had an amazing year. Um, going in, we had no clue who was actually going to be the lead running back in Washington. I think the consensus was Darius Geis, but um, Adrian Peterson gets some touches. He got traded. Geis got cut. Then it was between him, uh, between Antonio Gibson and Bryce Love. Gibson stepped up and has been played very well. Has been one of two bright one of three bright spots on this Washington football team. Number 2, Jonathan Taylor. I think he's played he's played very well. Um he did just had suffer an injury. Um but that's it's it's sad. But um he wasn't the lead back he was also splitting carries, and um, yeah, so it's a minor, a minor ankle injury. Sorry, I'm just bouncing all over the place. But yeah, Jonathan Taylor has a my, uh, minor ankle injury. That'll keep him off for a week or two, but he is also splitting the uh, backfield. Um, when Marlon Mack was healthy and when and with Naheem Hines now, uh, Jonathan Taylor, I think, out of Naheem, Naheem Hines and himself, is the typical running back that we see, but Naheem Hines is getting these third down uh, passes. That we saw an amazing touchdown against the Lions um, on Sunday. I hope Jonathan Taylor can step up into the sole running back, and I would like for the Colts to go and trade Marlon Mack, but um, that's just my hope, as I, I really want to see Jonathan Taylor um, flourish. I really want to get a Jonathan Taylor jersey. That's something I really want. But um, yeah, he's my number two. And at number one, Clyde edwards Hilaire, who was the biggest surprise pick, I think, taken at the end of the first round. Or I would have taken um, probably DeAndre Swift with that pick and then Jonathan Taylor. But it's proven out to have worked perfectly. Uh, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, third in the league in rushing as a rookie. 
and now with Le'Veon Bell on the team. I think it'll hurt his uh, stats quite a bit, which leads me um, to my question. If you can read this, no, you absolutely cannot read it. I will work on it. But what it says is, how many yards do you think Clyde Edwards-Hilaire will get this year? And it is only rushing yards, not rushing and receiving. Um, leave your predictions down below, and I don't, I don't know what I, if you get it right. Good job, you're better than I am. But yeah, th that's who I think is the best as of right now. Now, who do I think will win the MVP? More likely to win the MVP. Um, Zach Moss. I do not think it will be him. AJ Dillon has a nice shot after Aaron Jones retires, but I don't think he will be able to put up MVP type seasons. Joshua Kelly, as I mentioned, Austin Eckler comes back, his role greatly diminishes. I don't think he'll ever put up an MVP caliber, MVP caliber season. Uh, James Robinson, his numbers are slowly decreasing as teams are preparing more and more for him. I don't think he will ever post an MVP season. Now, these top six, I think, are very capable of producing an MVP season. Let's start with Cam Akers. Um, Akers is in uh, Los Angeles, the Rams, who have produced um, an MVP caliber running back in um, Todd Gurley, even though they had a passing style attack. And I think Cam Akers could, um, could not will, uh, replace Todd Gurley fairly well and can compete for an MVP. At number five, Antonio Gibson. Um, if Washington becomes good, it'll be on the back of him and Terry McLaurin and Chase Young on defense. But on offense, it'll be led by Gibson and uh, McLaurin. And I think Gibson, in the if they do become good, can lead Washington to an MV, like through an MVP season. Number four, J.K. Dobbins. Um, it all depends on when Mark Ingram retires, and it, it'll be really tough. J.K. Dobbins is very talented. Talented enough to win an MVP. But I just don't think with Lamar in the backfield as quarterback, not as running back, and um, uh, Mark Ingram, it's going to be very tough for J.K. Dobbins to go and win an MVP. But he is talented enough. So now these top three, I think, are real legitimate shots at winning an MVP. I'll start with DeAndre Swift. Pretty soon, I think the offense will solely focus on him as Matt, Matthew Stafford is getting older, getting close to retiring. I think this can focus on a run-style attack, especially with Matt Patricia as head coach. Uh, this can develop into a run-first run offense with, led by DeAndre Swift, who can produce an MVP-type season under that offense. Number two, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. A similar scenario with J.K. Dobbins, except for Clyde Edwards-Hilaire has been producing numbers. Um, I think Mahomes and Tyreek Hill will always be and Kelsey will be the feature three in this offense. But Clyde Edwards Hilaire is trying to get his head in there. He's trying to feature as well, and he's been doing amazing. I don't think it'll be enough for an MVP type season, and I very well could be proven wrong. He's already third in the league in rushing yards. Once Le'Veon Bell proves himself, which I think he will this year, he will prove that he's still a good running back. He will get signed by a team, maybe the Dolphins or the Jets. No, wait, not the Jets. He was just on the Jets. Dingus. A team that needs a running back. Uh, and it becomes Clyde's backfield again, he could produce an MVP type season. But the number one running back who I think can who can produce an MVP season is Jonathan Taylor. Once Philip Rivers retires, I talked about in the last video with Jacob Eason, will blossom, so will Jonathan Taylor. This He is very talented. If they trade Marlon Mack away, I think they can still keep Naeem Hines and have Jonathan Taylor produce an amazing um, MVP type season uh, behind this an amazing offensive line by, led by Quinton Nelson. Jonathan Taylor can very flourish greatly in um, Indiana and w maybe win an MVP. Now, who will have the most Pro Bowls? Um, I think Zach Moss and Joshua Kelly might not get any Pro Bowl nods. I th they could have a season or two like Tariq Cohen had um, that gets him in gets them into the Pro, uh, Pro Bowl, but they finished at ten and nine. And I don't think they will make a Pro Bowl. Uh, number eight, A.J. Dillon. He can make a Pro Bowl once Aaron Jones is done and his, his backfield. A.J. Dillon is very, very capable of being able to make a Pro Bowl. Very capable to make a Pro Bowl. That's a more precise sentence. Um, I think he will make one, maybe even two. But I 
not sold on to. But I think he will make one by the end of his career. Seventh, Cam Akers. Once he is fully healthy and developed a bit more into that lead role back, he can very e he can very easily, same with AJ Dillon, make at least one Pro Bowl, if not two or more. Um, very capable, very talented running back. Watch out for him in the near future. At six, J.K. Dobbins. Um, it's going to be hard in this loaded uh, running offense where everything is just so balanced for J.K. Dobbins to really stand out. It's going to take a lot of work, but I think he can do it, and he will make multiple Pro Bowls. Five, James Robinson. If his production keeps up, which it can. I know I mentioned earlier, I don't know if it will, but I think th it, there's a good shot it will as like a third down running back, as a Tariq Cohen. Um, James Robinson can make Pro Bowls. Number four, DeAndre Swift. If he has those amazing years once this team is solely focused on a run-heavy offense, he will dominate and make Pro Bowl after Pro Bowl after Pro Bowl. I'd say about 10 Pro Bowls, if I had, if I had to guess. Well, anywhere between 5 and 10. Third, Antonio Gibson. If Washington is to be good, it is on the back of Antonio Gibson, as I've mentioned before, and Gibson will carry himself to Pro Bowls. Whether this team is actually good or not, Antonio Gibson will carry himself to Pro Bowls if he establishes himself as that lead back and continues to dominate. Number two, Jonathan Taylor. I think he will easily make double-digit Pro Bowls, especially if this is a run-focused offense after Phillip Rivers retires. Um, Jonathan Taylor could, and I think Jonathan Taylor and number one Clyde Edwards-Hilaire will might go to every single Pro Bowl together. I think Clyde Edwards-Hilaire is a good shot. He goes to a Pro Bowl this year. I don't think Jonathan Taylor will get that, but after this year, I think they, there's a good shot they each go to 10 plus in a row. Now, who will have the most offensive player of the years? Um, this one was, I think, similar to the MVP, because this is basically the MVP for running backs. Um, number 10, Zach Moss. I just don't see it happening if his only, he can make a career out of goal line touchdowns, but not in, in like offensive player of the year type career. Nine, AJ Dillon. He's just going to get such a late start being behind um, Aaron Jones. I just don't see him making too many, um, getting too many offensive player of the years. Um, number eight, James Robinson. I've been so inconsistent with James Robinson, and I apologize. You'll see where I finally stand with him at the very end. I just don't think his play will get enough to be offensive player of the year worthy. Joshua Kelly at 7. Um, I think, now that I'm looking back, I would probably put James Robinson ahead of him, but I'm going to stick with what I wrote. Joshua Kelly, I think if he can kick Eckler out, like Eckler did to Gordon, um, he can compete for an offensive player of the year. Josh, uh, J.K. JK Dobbins, again, with the Pro Bowls, it's going to be hard for him to distinguish himself. And that's why he might not... He will compete for Offensive Player of the Year, but probably won't win it. At 5, Cam Akers. Cam Akers, if staying healthy, can win an Offensive Player of the Year. As we saw with Gurley. I think... I'm sure, Gur I'm sure Gurley's won an Offensive Player of the Year. Um, I, Cam Akers, under Van... Um, I was going to say Van Gundy. Holy cow, my brain's somewhere else. But in... Um, why can't I think of his name? It's probably because it's late. In this Rams offense, um, Sean McVay. Gosh, dang. Under Sean McVay, K-Makers can uh, compete for Office Player of the Years. Number four, Antonio Gibson. If Washington's to be good, it's on Antonio Gibson. I, it's basically the same reason for his success that I mentioned above. Now three, DeAndre Swift. Same reason I mentioned above except for they need to focus um, Deon on DeAndre Smith as this lead offensive player. He is capable to carry this offense, and I think and I hope Matt Patricia realizes this and gives him the ball. Number two, Jonathan Taylor. Again, it's all based on if they trade Marlon Mack away. I think if they keep Marlon Mack, his shots at offensive play are greatly diminished. He will eventually distinguish himself as that number one back, but it will take years. It'll take, um, it'll take yards away. It'll take touchdowns away. It'll take snaps away from a promising career for Jonathan Taylor. And number one, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. He's already, as I mentioned, third in um, rushing yards. 
and he can play on the he's playing very well on the best offense. So there's a good chance he will win at least one offense player of the year award. Next, jersey sales. This one is an interesting, very interesting one. It's not always dependent on your skill level, but um, Zach Moss and Joshua Kelly are still towards the bottom of this. Like, actually, Joshua Kelly, yeah, it, it's it's been always been between Joshua Kelly and AJ Dillon uh, towards the bottom. But Zach Moss, again, is dead last. I just don't see any Bills fans rocking a Zach Moss jersey in the near future, or any time in the future. Uh, Joshua Kelly at 9, same thing. I, it, it's all dependent on if he kicks Eckler out. I don't know if he will. Grant, I also didn't think Gordon was leaving, but he did. But yeah, Joshua Kelly, it's all dependent on if he can take that lead back spot. Um, James Robinson. Just he's from Jackson. He's playing in Jacksonville. I don't think it's gonna happen. He's not gonna sell as many jerseys as these top guys in big bigger markets. Seven Cam Akers, um, playing in L.A. greatly helps, especially if he becomes successful like a Gurley. Then he will sell a lot, a lot of jerseys, a lot of jerseys. Number six A.J. Dillon. This is the second highest ranking I think he gets, but um. Playing in Green Bay, once Aaron Jones is gone, Packer fans will eat up A.J. Dillon jerseys as he will become very successful, and that immediate reaction, they might sell out for the first month that A.J. Dillon is named the starter. Number five, J.K. Dobbins. Very talented player. Plays in Baltimore, a big football market. So I think I can see a lot of Ravens fans, if they're not wearing a Jackson jersey, a J.K. Dobbins jersey fits them very well. Number four, Antonio Gibson, will be one of three jerseys sold in Washington, uh, along with Terry McLaurin and Chase Young, and will benefit greatly from being one of the three stars. At in third, Jonathan Taylor, um, playing in Indianapolis doesn't help, and also playing on a team right now with Philip Rivers, uh, Quentin Nelson still selling a lot of jerseys, Pat McAfee still selling a lot of jerseys, um, play, playing with uh, Darius Leonard where these jersey sales. Colts fans won't always want a Jonathan Taylor jersey. I, I'm i looking to get one to help him in his cause to get number one. But I think it's very close with uh, Jonathan Taylor and these top these other top two. I think there's a bigger distance between um, Taylor and Gibson than there is between Taylor and Swift, who is number two. I think DeAndre Swift becomes the new Megatron, the sole offense um, in Detroit and um, becomes their number one jersey seller. But number one out of this draft class, at least for running backs, is going to be Clyde Edwards Hiller playing in Kansas City at one of the biggest football markets in the, in the United States. Will sell a lot of jerseys, especially because the Chiefs will always be successful. They're always going to be good, at least for the foreseeable future. And Clyde Edwards Hiller will be right in the middle of that. Now talking about being good, we're going to go to the most imp the two most important um, categories here, the rings and the GOAT conversation. The GOAT conversation being the greatest of all time. But let's start with the rings. Who is going to win the most rings? Dead last, Antonio Gibson. I just don't think Washington will be successful in his career, at least good enough to get him a ring. Same with James Robinson. Jacksonville will not be good enough to get him a ring. DeAndre Swift. I would like to see him get a ring. I just don't think... It will. They will happen in Detroit. I think they can very well be competitive, but in the NFC North, where they have to go through the Packers, the Bears, and the Vikings every other year, it's going to be tough for the Lions to stick out and get to the Super Bowl. Seven, Zach Moss, only because he will get. He there's a good shot he will get a ring, not necessarily because of himself, but because he is on Buffalo, who is. Been playing very well. Uh, well, they played very well at the beginning of the season. They kind of tailed off at the end, but I think they can grow and develop. And the fight for Miami for dominance of the AFC East, and maybe make it to a Super Bowl. Uh, number six, Joshua Kelly. If you listen to my last video when I was talking about Justin Herbert, this team is very well developed, and I think the Chargers actually have a very good shot at a ring. Fifth, Cam Akers. Uh, Los Angeles Rams have been playing very well, led by a 
a very good defense, and Cam Akers can add a whole lot to that offense. Number four, Jonathan Taylor. Um, as, or as I have my notes, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, Jonathan Taylor. I have him here because the Colts can be very good. I am hoping Jacob Eason is as good as promised and has learned behind Phillip Rivers to become a very good quarterback. And But mainly, Jonathan Taylor leads this offense, and with an amazing defense, the Colts can compete for championships. They're competing this year, and I think Jonathan Taylor will end up with a ring. Third, A.J. Dillon, um, because he's on the Packers. The Packers are one of the best teams in the NFL this year, and definitely competing for a Super Bowl. Along, but not quite as sure, at least for the future, as he's top two, with J.K. Dobbins finishing second on the Ravens. I'm sure the Ravens will get a ring as long as J when J.K. Dobbins is there. I am very sure of it, like 99.7% sure. But something I'm nearly 100% sure, the Kansas City Chiefs will get another ring, and Clyde edwards Hiller will have at least two of them. Maybe even three, four, five, six with Brady, and which put, might put Mahomes as the best quarterback ever. Yeah, that's a video for another day, maybe. But um, yeah, Clyde Edwards Hilaire Hilar Hilar will end up with the most um, rings out of this class, I think. Now on to the greatest of all time conversation, the GOAT conversation for these 10 running backs. I think Zach Moss finishes dead last out of these running backs, uh, just because he's in a tough situation with Devin Singletary as the lead back. Zach Moss is talented, but not enough to um, compete with these other nine. Joshua Kelly at ninth. Um, just ha won't establish himself as the lead back soon enough, or ever really, and uh, he's not going to compete with, compare well with these other running backs. Number eight, James Robinson. I think he will tail off after three years or so at most. His production will plateau, maybe like a Leonard Fournette, starting off extremely hot, cooling down a lot. He finishes eighth, seventh. AJ Dillon. What pushes him ahead is the rings. And he will dominate once um, Aaron Jones is out of Green Bay. Not that he should leave right now, but once he is gone, AJ Dunn will dominate. Someone else who will dominate, Cam Akers, I think will finish as the sixth best running back from this draft class. Um, very talented, should fit, I think fits very well in this um, Sean McVay offense, and will finish as a pretty good player. J.K. Dobbins, fifth. He will put up numbers uh none will really wow you but you will never be disappointed in the numbers that he puts up he will finish as the fifth best running back from this draft class at number four antonio gibson i think he will develop into a star in washington and um as i mentioned if washington is good it's on his back and if they are good he will finish very high on the greatest of all time conversation number three deandre swift Similar to um, Antonio Gibson. If Detroit is to be good, it's on the back of DeAndre Swift. And if DeAndre Swift can produce, he will be finished high on the greatest of all time conversation. Now the top two. I think my top two um, throughout the season, Clyde edwards Hilaire and Jonathan Taylor. Who finished number one? It is Clyde edwards Hilaire. He has finished number one in just about... Every single category I've measured him, he finished first in rings, first in jersey sales, first in office play of the years, Pro Bowls, and, um, and right now. The only thing is the MVP, so that's the only thing uh, Jonathan Taylor could have on him. And even still, Clyde edwards Hilaire might win an MVP. I don't know, but I think Clyde edwards Hilaire will finish first in the greatest all-time conversation, while Jonathan Taylor finishes shortly behind him. It'll be very close between these two, and I... Can't wait to watch them dominate the NFL for the for years to come. Thank you all very much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. Sorry again for the long videos. I'm working on a way to cut these down. It is slightly shorter, so be grateful for that. Uh, if you can't, I would like to see this one boom as much as the last one did, if not even more. But um, yeah, in order to do that, leave a like. Uh, watch it for as long as you can until you get bored of my voice, which I'm surprised in 30 seconds. But Thank you very much for watching. Adios.